so every index in Elastic in OpenSearch is essentially a Lucene index. Lucene is a, is a Java library that is in the core of OpenSearch. That's what OpenSearch is built on. And OpenSearch is, is really maintaining a lot of, of Lucene indexes. Each Lucene index, you know it as an OpenSearch shard. So a single OpenSearch index will usually have one shard. So it means that it has one Lucene index under the hood. A Lucene index is built uh, with several data structures in it. So the inverted index looks like this, and it allows you to execute the text search. BKD tree is, is a very optimized data structure that allows you to do numerical up the lookups, and that includes numeric fields and geospatial fields and others. Column store is what helps us do aggregations. It's a data structure. It's additional data structure that lets us do that. Document store is what keeps the original source of the document that you've added. So when you search, you get back to source. This is the from the document store. I'll skip term vectors. There's also vector store now that in recent versions of OpenSearch that has vector search enabled as well. What, the reason why I'm showing you this is because of, of this important slide. All index parts are immutable. So every all the things I just showed you is immutable. Whatever you do, when for example, when you add a new document or when you update an existing document in OpenSearch, everything is immutable. The data is actually not being updated. What's actually happening is that OpenSearch and, and actually the scene under the hood uh, is actually being writing new data uh, continuously. And when new data updates all data, it has this concept of deletion markers that it can it keeps. So essentially, when you update a document or when you delete a document, what you're doing is actually you are writing a new document that has a deletion marker instead of updating the old one. And that's in effect, in, in essence, it adds some technical depth that has to be cleaned up. And that's why this is important. So it's good that it does it because when you have all data that you've already written and optimized, it, it can be compressed. There is no locking on writes, so you can write in parallel or have a, a very high throughput on writes. It's file system cache friendly and so on. So it's a good design decision overall. But the problem is that to make changes and make, del and make deletions, you have to really do this the way that I described. And when you do a lot of write and a lot of updates, it creates some technical depth. So in short, the way that indexing works in, in Lucene and therefore in OpenSearch as well, is that um, everything is being written to some in-memory buffer that is get, then going to be flushed to disk. And we, then we call it a segment, right? And then the more frequently that you do that, you'll end up with more segments. When you make a deletion, essentially a segment is being written that points to the old data and tells us that it needs to be deleted. So in order to keep that data, we do we call it an a, a operating system command that's called fsync. Fsync is a very low level op OS command that basically tells um, the system to write for whatever it has in memory to the disk. And the idea is that we want to minimize the amount of times that we do it. So we will write as much as we can in memory, but to make things, things searchable, we want to create a segment out of it. To make it safe, we want to make, to also do an F-sync. So OpenSearch balances it all using this flow. When you write to OpenSearch, writes are done to the translog. It writes data to the translog. And translog is actually a very efficient data, data, data structure in OpenSearch and Lucene that allows us to write the commands that we got, so the documents that we got to write, and it writes them into the translog. So if anything happens, uh, everything can be restored from the translog. It's still not being applied to the index. And then this loop begins in memory buffer being indexed to from the translog, essentially the commands. And Lucene will sometimes flush the, that in memory buffer. So it creates a segment 
and then the data is searchable. The index is what we call reopened to reflect those changes. The readers are going to be reopened. And every so often, in the commit, if F sync call will be called, so those things are being persisted as on disk as well. So we're guaranteed they are persistent on disk. And then we are going to clear the trans log and then the loop continues. Okay. Yeah. Sorry? Does the same flush then call something that's created in memory or? Yeah, the segment is created on disk, but, we, but it's still not guaranteed to be on disk. The operating system does a lot of magic to, to optimize performance. So it tells you that it wrote something on disk, but it didn't really write that on disk. Until you call fsync, you're not 100% sure that it's really written on disk. That's why we call fsync, but we don't want to call fsync all the time. So that's why this loop is like the, the highly optimized version or highly optimized approach that OpenSearch takes to make sure the data is persisted and written. So when you write to OpenSearch and you get back an OK, it means that the data has been written to the translog. It doesn't mean that it's searchable yet, but and it definitely doesn't mean that the index is fully synchronized, but it does mean that your command is, is in the translog and the translog is guaranteed to be persistent. So if you've gotten okay, you know the data has been made. Now, in addition to that, OpenSearch will also replicate the command to other replicas. So it's actually, you actually have two safeguards the translog in one node at, at, at least, and also in other replicas received your command, if you have replicas. To, because the, this operation creates a lot of segments, by default, the rate in which you, we create new segments is every one second. So every one second, we will create a segment. That's called a refresh interval. So when we don't need it, maybe we should use a higher refresh interval, that's one. But second, that also means that whatever refresh interval you use, you still get segments created every few seconds. And that could be a lot of segments and very small ones. So there is a, a concept called merge policy and, and, and a merge uh, operation in OpenSearch. It basically takes all of those small um, segments and merges them into larger ones. And also segments that contain deletions, deletion markers, will also get prioritized so we can basically flush deletes uh, from the index as well. So what merge does, it takes several uh, segments, creates a bigger segment out of it, and that bigger segment is going to be is, is going to be persistent and the old segments are going to be deleted. There is always going to be uh, some balance because more than one segment is good for search performance because of parallelism that can happen under the hood. But too many segments is not good for search performance. So we need to find the, the right balance. And that's what the merge policy is, is usually trying to do. Uh, there is a maximum size for it. There is prioritization on what segments to, to take first and so on. Okay, so that, that's the merge policies. You shouldn't touch that by default. I just, I want you to be aware that this happening, this happens. And also the important part is the, the refresh interval. So the refresh, that's the process that creates those in-memory segments that will eventually be flushed to disk. And that's what makes data searchable. By default, it's every one second, but it also can create a lot of segments. So if data freshness is not that uh, interesting or important to you, changing this to 10 seconds or 30 seconds sometimes can improve the, the overall cluster performance, right? as long as you don't write too much, because if you write a lot, then you blow up the, the in-memory buffer. So there always needs to be this kind of, again, balance, but do for refresh interval, that, that's what it does. And that's sometimes important to understand. It's important uh, optimization sometimes. And we talked about deletions, right? But now, now I think you understand why the we do not really like deletions or updates in OpenSearch. It's okay to do that. We know how to manage that. But the more deletions and updates you're going to have, the more management toil or cleanup, garbage collection the system has to do. All right, let's talk about shards for a second and sharding. And that's an important, I, talk, I touched on that earlier, but now I think it will be a little bit clearer. So a shard is, is this Lucene index 
that you need to have at least one per index of open search index. Right? So an open search index is has at least one shard. Usually we would just say you have one shard and that's it. Uh, you don't need more than one shard. If we wanted to create, to allow you to ingest much, much more data, we will probably need to have more than one shard because one shard is the it would be the the focal point or the the infection point of of performance because you're going to have one shard and that will only be on one node and you only have those amount this amount of resources per node so if we wanted to ingest let's say that a node can only ingest ten thousand documents per second right and if I want to ingest you need to ingest one hundred thousand documents per second I don't have any other choice but to have 10 data nodes to ingest, but I cannot have one index on 10 data nodes unless I'm sharding it, right? I need to have 10 shards, each one on a different node, and then it will be able to ingest that. That's why we have this concept of shards. Usually it helps us do that. There's other reasons, but that's the primary reason why I would want to have more than one primary shard. And that's what you see here. So if I have an index, and that index has one shard and one replica. I would have two shards in total, but it's the same shard, just one, one primary shard and one replica shard. They will be identical, except for that role of one shard that got the primary role, primary shard role. And that means it will receive the document updates or indexes first, and then it will replicate it to the replica, which will also be on a different node. Uh, we have to say, and then and then if something happens to the node running that shard, the primary shard, let's say the primary shard disappears because the node just went away, the replica shard can, will be promoted to be the primary shard. Okay, that's the whole idea why you have replicas and that concept of redundancy. So if something happens, it will be you you have a, something to fail over to. So primary shard and replica shard are just it's just a role, right? It's just the primary shard is just some I arbitrarily decided it's going to be the primary shard. And if something happens, the replica can be upgraded uh, instantaneously by the master, by the way, to be the primary shard. I want to have more primary shards if I want to support more write throughput, or I need to have smaller shards for the index. And earlier we discussed this concept of data streams and rollovers. So there's more ways of creating smaller shards. Okay. But if the ingestion rate is very high, then probably I need to have more than one primary shard. And replica shards will be will be there for me to support a bigger and higher better redundancy and also a higher read throughput. In terms of shard sizes. The, the, there is not really a clear guidance, right? So there's do's and don'ts, but it's not like there's no one number you should aim for. We usually recommend anything between 10 to 50 gigabytes with let's say 30 being the, a, a good stable, good rule of thumb average. And it will work really well for many use cases, but it doesn't make sense to have many small shards. So that's another recommendation you should expect getting from us if, if you have that thing. We wouldn't want to have many small shards because it's it's inefficient, especially if it's the same data or it could have been collapsed. We see that a lot with daily indexes. Like I said, some days are you're smiling and that means that you have it, but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll handle that later. But having many small shards just means that you're just working too hard. It could have been much more compressed and one shard could have responded. And that's why Again, we are pretty much against daily indexes nowadays in 2025 when there's other options. And that's why data streams and rollovers help us maintain stable shard size across the board because they will only roll over to a new index when the index hits a certain size, not before. So that's one of the things that we usually do. As for ingestion, keep a shards as the level of parallelism that you have Again, this is if you really have significant indexing going on. If you don't have, I would say if you don't have at least thousands of documents, updates or inserts per second, don't worry about it. Bulking is always preferred. So instead of writing one by one, 
or 10, 10 in each bulk, you want to really optimize for bulks in the five megabytes to 15 megabytes per, per size of the entire bulk, instead of number of documents, it's much better. If you can queue things up and then have some sort of uh, of indexer being queued, executing the events from the queue, that's the best approach to, to have. And that's how you can ensure that there's a certain indexing funnel and everything goes well. Indexing any refresh interval we discussed, and then also optimizing mappings, like we said.